They were the heroes from the future. Teenagers protecting the universe from those that would sow the seeds of chaos. Each had unique powers and abilities. And though they often had their differences, they came together to save the day as the Legion of Superheroes. Now you can be a part of their adventures and learn the history of the future in the Legion Clubhouse. This week on the Legion Clubhouse, Rock, Lita, we've got to get you back to the future. Cosmic Boy number three, past, present, and future. Published February 1987. Written by Paul Levitz with art by Keith Giffen and Ernie Colon. Synopsis. What's old and purple and ready to erase the Legion of Superheroes from existence? We are now into Cosmic Boy number three, which, according to the cover, is actually mm-hmm. chapter 13 in Legends. Yes, um... If you are one of those people who actually pays attention to all of Legends. And I'm not saying that you don't have to, because there are bits in here that, you know, there's a glorious Godfrey appearance and discussion of, you know, the Hellhounds, which I'm sure we'll get to. But there is stuff in here that is based on, oh my gosh, look at this thing that was happening in Legends, but nothing here requires you to know about Legends yeah. as far as I can I, tell. I but. don't, well, I mean, if you're wanting to get the ongoing story of what's going on because certainly the Warhounds uh, discussion with uh, Glorious Godfrey and I think there was another part, oh, there are some other interstitial things that kind of tangentially yeah. connect, like the Black Canary is now sought as a as a criminal right. and um, something about um, Captain Boomerang is in there briefly yeah, as yeah, well yeah, too. Yeah. And that ties into the launch of the suicide squad because old Boomer founding member of the squad. Yeah. Maybe the founding member of the squad. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure. I'm not <laughs> really sure what's, what's going on in here in this issue. There's a whole lot of nothing uh, in my opinion. Where they keep uh, drive, I feel like I feel like the writer uh, of this, Paul Levitz, has been mm-hmm. a frustrated GM in a game because he keeps right. dropping hints like time, time is on my side, time and time again, time keeps on ticking, uh, time people, time, time. you're gonna re- hit a wall uh, in, in, as you're traveling through the time stream. It's almost like the GM is constantly dropping hints and the players are just not right. picking up on it. It's. It's almost like a curtain, Stephen, made made of some sort of metal, perhaps, I don't know, ferrous oxide. I don't know if it's an iron curtain, but it's definitely a uh, curtain of time. I I kind of agree with you that this is kind of a big nothing. And I, you know, I, I can't remember if you actually said it or if we just remarked somewhere along the line. This absolutely could have been a subplot in the main Legion book, Mm -hmm. if it weren't for the sheer number of subplots in the main Legion book. But also this issue is maybe the worst third issue syndrome I've ever (laughs) seen because literally we see cosmic boy at the beginning going, all right, we need to get back in our bubble and go back to the future. And then he fails and he's like, all right, well, we need to go get back in our bubble and go back to the future. But this time explaining my powers, and then he fails, and then he's like, all right, remember that guy that we met in issue one, uh, you know, has the same last name as me? Let's go ask him and his 1969 GMC panel van, which, by the way, if you're an astrophysicist, I feel like you Not just might an be... astrophysicist, but an astronaut. An astrophysicist, an astronaut? I feel like a 1969 GMC panel van, like my grandpa used to camp in, just doesn't feel like... It doesn't feel like his jam. This I feels like. Have you ever seen um, Ant Man and the Wasp, where that whole quantum, yeah. the whole quantum machine is in the back of a van? It's kind of like that. Yes. This isn't this isn't his daily driver. His daily driver is oh. probably like a Corvette of some kind because he's, he's a like he's a, a spaceman. So uh, a space this man. is his equipment van. This is what he uses when he packs his bag at night pre-flight. Yeah. When zero hour is nine. Okay, I'll buy that. Um, but then for the third time, 
Cosmic Boy is like, we need to go and get in our time bubble and go back to the future. And I'm just like, what? What is going on throughout this issue? There are so many moments where I just feel like they're, they're trying to build the tension. They're trying to make it feel, you know, like, oh, something terrible is happening and Rock is stranded. And then we have that moment where Lita is strong enough to pick up a tree and smash you know, the, the, uh, thing that's hiding the time bubble, but then immediately they get in the time bubble and she breaks her arm. She's in the time bubble. She is not directly in sunlight. So I don't understand how she's not at least a little bit invulnerable. And if you ask yourself, oh, well, maybe she just took a bad fall and cosmic boy, well, cosmic boy is not in any way invulnerable. So I don't know how she gets injured and he doesn't. And then maybe he fell on top of her. Oh, that's what it is. He, yeah. he broke her arm. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. It's probably that iron hairdo that he has. Probably. His magnetic yeah, personality, and, uh, caused it to, to snap in half. Oh, don't ever affecting her, the, the iron in her blood. Does Cosmic boy ever oh. do that where he does a magneto where he's just like, I will use the iron in his blood to have him stand still. Spring. In 299, where you kept claiming he was turning to an Eclipso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then at the last second. Everybody he, always turns into an Eclipso. Well, yeah, when, when Keith Giffen is, is inking. Uh, there's but some yeah. comment. I don't know why I have this written down. Uh, sure, mm-hmm. let's overthrow the federal government. Same as it ever was. Drain the swamp. For some reason, I have that in here. There's some comment about overthrowing the federal government in here. Oh, I think it's uh, Glorious Godfrey. Uh, making Godfrey. some comment about using the war dogs of the war hounds to, mm-hmm. uh, to, to make sure that he and the others are in, in control of the government. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Glorious Godfrey introduced the war hounds and the war hounds for me are the point where legends goes right off the rails because they start legends with a relatively kind of actually exactly like Marvel's civil war, probably 30 years later, they started with a realistic premise that, Oh, these dangerous superhumans, we can't yeah. trust them. And they're like, okay, well, absolutely. The government should regulate them. You know, we should figure out who is who we should make sure that everyone is operating on the up and up. But at the point where you send giant evil metal wolf robots to eat them, I feel like that's the point where you have to, be like, I mean, you know, the, the gif of, are we the baddies? Cause yeah, it's kind of like the really... Sentinels. I see the Warhounds as kind of like the Sentinels, right? Yeah. Um, let's go track down those with mutant powers. Let's send these powerful things after, uh, people that have superpowers. I don't know yeah, what I would that's... think of a superhero registration act. I, I don't know how I would feel about that. I don't know how I feel about it in legends. Cause it's been forever since I've read legends but I'm getting mm-hmm. glimpse and taste of it here in, in cosmic boy. And, um, part of me is okay with the suicide squad and what they're mm-hmm. trying to do there or task force X or whatever you want to call them. But right. part of me is like, Hey, listen, if, uh, if uh, Superman needs to protect mm-hmm. his identity, cause it's going to put people around him in danger. Then I don't see why Superman would have to reveal his identity. See, and that I think is where we come up against the fundamental problem of a superhero comic when, you know, I think, you know, Grant Morrison said it best when they said, who pumps the tires on the Batmobile? Nobody does. It's an F-bomb story. And I feel like when you start asking yourself, what are the legal restrictions of a world where people are acting as masked vigilantes or costumed vigilantes? Uh, things that are absolutely illegal in the American justice system. Mm-hmm. And then you say, how would this work in the American justice system? You've you've basically created a premise where you can't win. How does this completely illegal thing work legally? And the answer is, it's a completely illegal thing. But if you look at, especially in the DC universe, and I think this is one of the reasons why Legends was such a big deal, traditionally, Everybody trusts the heroes. Batman was an official deputy of the Gotham City Police Department for decades. Superman is a shining symbol of blibbity blue. Everybody trusts Wonder Woman to the point where Wonder Woman, you know, lands at the White House and walks in. And people are like, oh, it's Wonder Woman. Yeah. 
But you also have that thing where Bronze Age storytelling, and this is entirely Stan Lee's fault, but that Bronze Age storytelling where the, the creeping realism and we need to get reality in here. We need to have Jon Stewart in here and we need to actually address the fact that Jon Stewart is a man of color. We need to have these realistic elements. Oh, no, I think that makes in, for interesting storytelling. And and, and I think does. that even though you say it, it doesn't matter in the in the words of, of Grant Morrison, I think it does kind of matter. I think it is something that people should think about because, you know, in the 1980s in New York, you have um, uh, the, the what was the angels group? Um, the Harlem Guardian Angels, Angel. uh, the Guardian Angels. Right. And police kind of let them just do their thing. And they were not deputized. They were vigilante, quote unquote, task force uh, using True, their but- uh, their imposition in, in that way. Uh, so I think it is that question of, well, do you make the Guardian Angels? Registered? Do you make them go through police training? Do you deputize them and then extrapolate that out like 15 iterations later when what if there is a person who wants to run around with a mask on and do the exact same thing as the Guardian Angels, but they're afraid right. that because they're they're uh, taking down El Chapo, that El Chapo is going to come and murderize his or her family. So they have to keep their secret identity secret. I think it, it, it's a good kind of it's a fun mind game and it does make you think about what does it mean to be a vigilante and is vigilante justice right and we've seen in recent times where people try to use vigilante justice and it's like it doesn't backfire horribly in the case of the person who did it because they got off uh, free but it does sour people's uh, ideas of what does it mean to be a somebody to use vigilante justice or you can watch Rambo or you can watch, you know, uh, uh, Punisher, or, you know, you can watch any, any number of people, uh, in those ways. But I think that asking those questions does make you stop for a moment and go, yeah, what about all this? Asking the question is not necessarily the problem. It's the end game of what you do with it. And well, and that's how we end up with the suicide squad, right? When you ask, right. Legends had some answers for this. And part of the answer, uh, coming out of legends was all right. Well, uh, the justice league does have some sort of official status, but they also have plausible deniability and they go Mm -hmm. off and they be their, you know, their, their own super thing. And this actually leads into justice league international, this leads into all of the stuff that, you know, the JLI era. It also gives us. feels like it is trying to make Dark Knight Returns happen, right? Because uh, the superheroes were outlawed in the Dark Knight Returns universe. Uh, mm-hmm. Oliver Queen is like the only one that was like, Feh, and he went out and, and continued to be a vigilante and hunted down. Superman, the big boy scout, caves into to jingoism, and everybody else is forced to quote unquote retire. Uh, so it kind of feels like legends is, is trying to make fetch happen in that case, uh, with this to some degree, I think you're right. But I also think that for me, at least the Superman response in legends, which was, I'm being told I'm illegal, so I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And, you know, then coming back and the Reagan administration saying you can do this and you can do that. And Superman is like, I cannot be a representative of the United States government or any particular person, as opposed to the dark Knight Returns Superman, who's basically a sycophant for whoever was in power. Uh, thanks Frank. Um, I feel like the difference in that execution is what makes a difference for me. And it's kind of that question of, when uh, during the civil war storyline at marvel which does come quite a while after this but has a very similar sort of origin we have spider-man unmasked Mm -hmm. and they're like this is something amazing untoward unheard of you know the original masked vigilante is now going to unmask and show us his personality that's great and it's a good story up until the point where they realize they've basically created a it's it's a closed-ended question So when you say in The Dark Knight Returns, if Superman does whatever the United States government tells him, what does that make Superman look like? A jerk. Uh, It makes him the villain of the piece in a lot of ways. That's, to me, a closed-ended question. You've kind of herded your story, because your story isn't about Superman, but you've herded your story involving Superman in a particular place and... 
then you have to deal with, the, or in that case, not deal with those consequences. I mean, he got beat and by I, Batman good. And in, and in the case it, of uh, Civil War, in the Civil War, they were like, oh my gosh, this means that Peter Parker was a kid when he was a uh, superheroing. We must outlaw all child uh, heroes. And then we've got to go on the run, and then we've got to go to the West Coast and deal with the runaways, and then we have to reboot the entire universe. That decision led to one of the most mocked storylines in modern comics when he sold his marriage to the devil to save his mommy's life. And part of that is how that's actually the storyline where Spider-Man got his secret identity back. They had to go to that length to undo that story bit. And the question that, you know, no one ever asked before they did it was what if we decide we have to undo this? Are we going to be able to do it in such a way that people don't mock it 20 years later? And the answer apparently was no, because I can mock, you know, brand new day, one more day, all day long. Oh, people mock everything every day. Uh, going back to, um, uh, cosmic boy number three, they finally Mm -hmm. break through this curtain of time. And they've discover at their end of time that the time trapper is the one behind the entire legends series. What a shock. What a shocking moment. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I say the time trapper is involved. Oh no. I know, right? And, you know, you, I can't remember if it was during Legionnaires 3 or the appearance before that, but you had mentioned that they're ramping the time trapper yeah. up to yeah, be more impressive. They're doing that angry. with all the, all the classic villains. And I feel like this is definitely an example of, ah, now I do not remember. Has, was time trapper in issue one or was he no, just uh-huh. in Legionnaires 3? Okay. He was just in the Legionnaires series. This is the first time that the tra- time trapper has shown his, uh, his uh, Cthulhu face in this entire cosmic boy series. So. No, he doesn't have a Cthulhu face. You're, you're thinking of the Durlin. Yeah. The Durlin time trapper. trapper. Yeah. There was never a Durlin time trapper. <laughs> wow. I, I do, did, do, did. Are you for sure? There was We've a never controller. Seen, yeah. We've never there seen under that hood. Controller? Yeah. There's no, there's trapper. no, um, there was glory morning. There uh, is there was no, um, uh, no time trapper. I guess we got out okay. If you enjoy the show, we would appreciate your support. You can find out more and become a Legion Clubhouse member at patreon.com slash major spoilers. Legion of Superheroes, Volume 3, Number 35. Forgotten Friends. Published June 1987. Written by Paul Levitz with art by Greg LaRoque, Mike DiCarlo, and Arnie Starr. Synopsis. Four heroes versus the universe. And Universo! Can an ex-Legionnaire turn the tide? Let us jump into the Forgotten Friends tale. Forgotten uh, friends. This is kind of a mess of a of a storyline, to be honest. By the time it, that we get to this part, because you have to remember, in the very previous issue, our mm-hmm. heroes, the four quote unquote smart ones, had made it mm-hmm. to Earth and they were being chased. And and by chased I mean they were being pursued by other people. Um right. and we had the team punchy was way out on the other side of the uh the universe fighting, right. uh, fighting, uh, uh, dominators. And then we had, uh, team Fishman. They were on a right. desert planet somewhere in the cosmos and we don't know where. And then suddenly in this issue, we have our heroes figuring it out, trying to get into Legion HQ or trying to figure out who the bad guy is. They kind of figured out that it's universal, but right. they can't do anything because all of the other Legion members suddenly appear out of nowhere and attempt to beat them up. I feel like it's that return of the Jedi problem again for four issues. It feels like we've been in different time frames, different time scales. 
So by at the point in time where the core four here escaped from the planet of nobodies, they uh, Monel and Block and uh, Ultra Boy still had their minds mm-hmm. and were being attacked by Ambassador Relnick. And of course, the last time you are correct, the last time we saw any of the uh, hard to actually do anything to because of their sheer levels of weirdness and power that that four person team was all uh dying horribly mm-hmm. in a canyon somewhere yeah. so something had to happen and i feel like the sliding time skippy thing had think, to be that <laughs> i think what's going to happen was like in motion. i think what's going to happen is dc's going to take a uh, a cue from from marvel comics and they're going mm-hmm. to release a legion of superheroes volume 3 number 35.5 to try and Don't. answer all of the problems yeah. with this, with this series. Hey, you would get your favorite Legion back for at least one issue. Don't even joke about it. I mean, that. if I say it three times, will it happen? 35.5, 35.5, 35.5. No, that's just me. <laughs> Comic-Con is coming up this weekend. Ooh. But one thing that is interesting about this issue that I did not realize until you mentioned it, and we were talking about team hard to hypnotize. Mm-hmm. Quizlet, does not seem to appear in this issue. Nope. What happened to Quizlet? If only Quizlet there was a was... 35.5 issue to tell us more. I'm running. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I mean, i really, when I got to this, I was like, I think I read the wrong issue. I think I missed an issue where stuff was happening, but no, there's no missing issue. Unless there's something that happened in another book somewhere. Uh, there is nope. nothing that answers the question. How did they get here? And maybe that's one of those hand wavy bits, but at the same time, well, at the same time, there were questions that were unanswered. How did they defeat Relnick? Or maybe they didn't, which tells you a whole lot about the team punch him in the face and what happened to uh, the team Fishman. What happened to them? How did they get off the burning planet or, or well, it, this issue isn't going to answer because this is the end of the story, or maybe they've all been living in, uh, Universo's trippy mind stuff, and they've been on, on Earth all along. See, now, if there was a trippy mind thing at the end of this, I would have been absolutely thrilled because it would have completely thrown away a lot of the complaints that I have about these four issues. Because mm-hmm. I've always liked this storyline, but the more that we go through and really you know, read it yeah. from a, a critical standpoint, the more I'm like, there's, there's some holes in here, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. but what, <laughs> what this really was, like old block was sized show, holes. this was a, this was a showpiece for four legionnaires. Yeah. This was a showpiece well, for, um, you know, the favorite chameleon boy is the favorite of Paul Levitz. He's always said that cam is his favorite. And of course, brainiac five, who is obviously one of the, the old schoolers, and then Dream Girl, who doesn't get enough respect, especially on this particular show. Yeah, exactly. And, we both uh, hate her. No, I think, yeah, no, it's really sure. weird because the whole point of these four issues is to do nothing more than to get Saturn Girl back on, back on the, the team. Legion team. And that just is kind of like, really? Because there was so much, so much going on and so many questions unanswered that if the end result was, hey, Saturn Girl's back on the team, poor Lightning Lad's going to have to stay home with the kids. Yeah, I think he's probably fine with that. Uh, he probably Especially is, but I will say this is the 1980s. He was when his Legion tour went bad and he was like, oh man. Listen, this is the 1980s and we yeah. have already seen once by 1986 how, how horrible men are at being the head of the household and staying home all day and, and running everything. Uh, we can thank Batman for that. Right. Uh, Mr. So, Batmom. Yep. Mr. Batmom. Uh, proved to that. everyone once and for all that men were incapable. I don't know if that's the beginning of the stupid husband trope, but it certainly feels like after that, men were just complete idiots all throughout sitcoms and, and everything. I think that the the idiot husband trope dates way back before that, but that's definitely a new angle. It's a new take on the idiot husband. Because I think, you know, Jackie Gleason was definitely an idiot husband. Oh, uh, yeah. Back in to, to an extent, yeah. I think that the whole point of this four issues was really to set up a moment where if you're going to say, okay, so here's the Legion, 26 members, they have a telepath 
on the team. They have three guys who can simulate the powers of Superman. They have a man who's living fire and a man who's living rock and a girl who can track anyone anywhere. Strangely, they have a guy named Timberwolf who's dumb as a bag of hammers. You got a little person, you got a giant person, you got somebody who's blue and throws, you know, the shadows and someone who's a creep and throws light. You've got all these characters. Why do you need a Saturn girl? And the answer is because Saturn girl has an iron will walks right into the presidential yeah, palace. Did the same thing with our side. Vidgupta. Yeah. Walks up to Vidgupta. It takes down mon and ultra boy in seconds. And I don't think she could have done that if they weren't like her friends for a million years, yeah. which is, you know, still an impressive thing. And then fights a fully powered universo with his gimmickry on in like full psychic combat and then punches him right in the, well, it looks like right in the, the lens and just knocks him out and then uses her power and his magic totem to un brainwash everybody who else on the Legion could have done that. Yeah, exactly. Nobody, nobody is that cool. Nobody is that tough. And that's the point where aside from my major complaint of this issue, which is that Saturn girl's haircut changes I know, every page single page, page yeah. panel to panel. Yeah. Um, that's actually a pretty great ending. And I will not say that the big holes between issues two and three and issues three and four are worth that final sequence of Saturn girl. I feel like the creators are definitely saying that it is. I feel like it's not a terrible imbalance because we do get to see a new side of dream girl. We do get to see the new side of chameleon boy. We get to see brainiac dealing with just straight up brain stuff and, and coming to the realization that, you know, that time I once made a killer robot. Yeah. Here so he is yeah, again. I'll have that lab. I could probably just make a couple <laughs> yeah, of killer robots. Just make a couple of new computers. Now. Hey, uh, yeah. So if you look at that final splash page, there is no quizlet again, anywhere in there. And then the other thing is, where is Starboy at? Where, what is he doing? Is he on leave or what? what's his deal? Starboy has left the Legion uh, and gone home to Xanthu because Xanthu's official champion. Oh, that's right. Atmos, uh, Atmos was, that's right. Okay. Uh, I've forgotten what happened to him. Uh, I was just yeah. like, okay, why isn't Starboy in here? So, uh, Atmos yeah, it was actually the first hint of this storyline because Atmos yeah. went missing. Yeah. Which is what sent the team yep. out to yep, look yep, for yep, him. Yep. Yep. But now I remember. And then Atmos wound up in prison with the four legionnaires. Um, okay. So look between on the, on that final splash splash panel, we've got tell yeah. lightning lad, or I'm sorry, lightning lass, or maybe right. it is lightning lad. We got shrinking violet. And then who is that? Is that Siobhan? That's not duo damsel. That is duo damsel. You see the orange and the purple. Yeah. That's why I was wondering why is duo damsel here? But no. bouncing boy is not. That's why I was wondering if this was Siobhan Aaron. Because is not bouncing, but where, okay. So where is magnetic kid? Uh, there is no is magnetic, magnetic, kid. magnetic kid. Is he the one in between sun boy and element lad? Oh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Cause yeah, there's mon L pink leg. And yeah. Then and then uh, behind shrinking violet is, um, ultra boy. And ultra then boy Jim and is over there behind Telus. And Timberwolf is behind Telus. No, yeah. That's, Cause that's not Colossal Timberwolf. Boy's that's, in the, that's Col oh no, Colossal Boy is back there. there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the big one. Oh yeah, that you have to the generic up. heads. Generic heads are just the worst because you yeah, literally can't is. tell if, except for the little pinking of the logo, you can't tell the difference yeah. between Timberwolf and uh, Ultra Boy. Yeah, it is difficult, and I'm actually looking at the original printing, which was flexographic printing, so it's even worse. The color registration is way off, so. Wildfire is just this orange kind of mass, but you know, that's sort of a wildfire thing, but yeah, that yeah, it's really a red haired woman in an orange and purple suit. So for some reason, duo damsel is there, but Quizlet is not. I wonder if duo Neither damsel was uh, running the, uh, monitor board. Oh, bouncing boys, probably on the monitor board. <laughs> He's on monitor duty. He's sitting there going, yeah, you remember Shucks, he loves I'm on monitor, monitor duty again. Wah, wah. He loves monitor duty. He just, like to, to sit and watch TV all day. Yeah. From the yeah, exactly. And uh, not a, I, so I will say that this four, three issues, four issues, whatever it is, uh, four, started yeah. out really 
strong, I thought, and I thought it had a lot of good plots. But by the time we get to this ending issue, I was just like, I don't know what, I don't know. You really have to do a lot of hand waving and just shrugging your shoulders and go up. It's comic books to really make this thing make a lot of sense. I was kind of disappointed in the end of it. The build up great. The ending and the reveal with Universo and the fighting Universo is really cool. But just for it to be like, I'm Saturn girl. and I went back on the team. Hooray. Um, is just kind of, kind of weak in my opinion. Because she could have come back on the sensor girl is oh sensor girl is there. She could have come back yeah. on the team when they brought sensor girl back on. Well, she could have, but you know she didn't know she wanted to. Yeah, I don't know. I just thought I this this ending was weak. It is, and the thing that 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 is really unusual about this is it's but it's not a retelling. It's what these days they would call a requel. Uh, of the original story with universe of the super star log of space from adventure 344 and 345 back in 66. So if you remember the super star log of space, what it did more than anything was give uh, a little glimpse of duo damsel and light lass and matter eater lad having to work without the support yeah. of their teammates Yeah, I was... to have to be in a situation where you didn't have the whole legion behind you. But Matter Eater Lad, you may remember, Matter Eater Lad actually ate yeah, a tunnel just ate his way. Yeah. out of Stalag 72 yeah. or whatever it yeah. was. Yeah. And that, I think, is what this was. This was, here's a chance to give Dream Girl some, some stuff that we want to do. Here's a chance for me to play with Chameleon Boy and to bring back a founder to the team. Because le- all three founders leaving at once, I feel, was a misstep. But... It ends very bad. I don't have letter and pages. I, I don't have letter pages. So I, it'd be interesting to see if there were like fan reactions, like how dare you? I will never read a Legion comic ever again. Paul Levitz must be removed from this. Well, this, this is Legion of superheroes, number 35. So in the parlance of the day, if I were to look at Legion 37, which I happen to have right here. Uh, da, 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 well, I mean, da, da, uh, originally when the, when the trio, the founders left if there were right. a lot of uh, oh. negative reactions to that. So yeah, there were, I, I remember that actually, there were a lot of situations where people were just like, mm-hmm. how can you have a Legion without the founders? And the answer is simple. Uh, um, the Legion is a Legion and not the founders. People complained in the, the two thousands oh, people constantly complained that they were trying to stop that. I mean, they did people complained in the two thousand. No, they didn't. I was a bit, <laughs> People complained in the 2000s about the Avengers book not having Captain America, Iron Man, and Thor in it. And it was a really great lineup. It was a lineup with the Wasp and the Vision and the Scarlet Witch and the She-Hulk and Captain Marvel. Well, she wasn't Captain Marvel at the time. She was Warbird. And it had, you know, Vance Astro. No, it had Justice, who is the child version of Vance Astro from an alternate universe a thousand years earlier than Vance Astro. But it had all of these really great characters doing fun stuff. And it was Perez art and it was Kurt Busick writing and people were whining. It doesn't have Captain America and Thor. Well, not everything has Captain America and Thor. Yeah, exactly. There you go. So um, I am on the fence with how this whole Cosmic Boy story is going to wrap up. Not impressed with the ending of uh, this this current line. Glad Saturn Girl's back, don't get me wrong. I just thought that this was the, the weakest of the four issues. Agreed. That wraps it up for this installment of the Legion Clubhouse. Matthew, what did we learn this week? We learned that if you're really, really powerful, you can change your haircut from page to page and no one complains. I think we also learned that just because you're in the past doesn't mean you're the one with the only time travel machine. Mm, Booster Gold, mm, Rip Hunter, mm, just saying. And we learned that Chameleon Boy is not averse to stealing from Marvel thanks to the old Ben Grimm fist routine. Thanks, everybody, for checking out the show this week. We'll be back the next time. Until then, take care. The Legion Clubhouse is a production of Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC, and is produced by Stephen Schleicher. Your hosts were Matthew Peterson and Stephen Schleicher. You can follow Matthew at Mighty King Cobra and Stephen at Major Spoilers. You can follow this podcast on Twitter at Legion Clubhouse. If you have questions or comments, send them to podcast at Majorspoilers.com. I'm Jason Inman. Until next time, eat it, Grandpa.
This podcast is copyright 2024 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.